All right, let's talk about induction of labor. So I think induction gets a really bad name. People go online and see horror stories, and I think that that bad name is really not earned. So I think the key with induction is to be patient. Patience is a virtue. So when a mom comes in for her induction, one of the first things I say is, you know what? Your baby's birthday might not be today, and it might not be tomorrow, and that is okay. So an analogy that I think helps for understanding induction is that your uterus is the baby's house, and the cervix is the door to the house. And the cervix, when people start an induction, oftentimes is completely slammed shut. Picture a really thick metal door that is not trying to open to let the baby out of the house. So one of the first things that we do is called cervical ripening. And it's putting a little tablet inside the vagina. And the idea of that tablet is just to soften and to open that door so that it's a little bit open. Once we make sure that the cervix is nice and open, um, slightly and softened, then we can go to the next step. Usually that's a medication called Pitocin. If you look Pitocin up online or you talk to your friends, people act like Pitocin is this horrible drug. Um, it's not, it's actually just a fake version of the hormone that your brain makes to make the uterus contract. And we don't just slam people with Pitocin. It actually starts at really tiny doses and we keep increasing the dose just slightly until we make sure that the uterus is in a really nice contraction pattern. There are a few other tricks to the trade that we might use along the way. One of them is called a Foley bulb. So if this is the cervix, the Foley bulb is really just a little balloon that goes inside the cervix. We blow it up and now with every contraction, you actually have a little ball that's sitting there providing a little bit more mechanical pressure. So with every contraction, you're getting more bang for your buck. It's just gently helping to stretch the um, cervix out. Another thing we might do is break the water. So if the baby is happy just dangling inside the uterus, once you break the water, the head becomes well applied on the cervix. It's the same principle as that balloon. It just helps to gently push the cervix open with every contraction. So one thing to realize with induction is that the beginning part can go extremely slowly. So you could do cervical ripening for up to a day and that's okay. Um, once you get into active labor and you're five or six centimeters or so, then it becomes a little bit more predictable. We expect that you should dilate a centimeter every one to two hours or so, and then have a baby hopefully within a six to 12 hour time frame. Moms often ask me to predict when is the baby gonna come, and I never fall into that tra trap because I don't know. If I knew the answer to that question, I'd have a crystal ball and I'd be a millionaire.